Hi, my name is Christina Gabitas, and I'm a, an author, uh, honorary member of the NSPCC Council, and I'm passionate about safeguarding children. I'm here today just to tell you a little bit, well, about the work that I've been undertaking. Uh, there's a previous um, video that was put out about the work that I've been undertaking in schools, uh, predominantly primary schools with uh, the No More Nice County Lines. So I'll give you a short background. So in 2019, I've been writing for over 12 years and in 2019, I was approached by the Police and Crime Commissioner's Office of Humberside to see if I could engage with children and young people on the topic of knife crime. And whilst I did that and got them to write poetry, I realised a lot of the time knives were involved, drugs were involved as well, and therefore was born No More Knives or County Lines. So the story sees a group of children groomed into County Lines who suffer the consequences of, of, of carrying a knife. So I've worked with uh, Humberside Police, North Yorkshire Police, Lancashire Policing Team and a Newcastle Policing Team. So I've worked extensively over the past uh, year or so with North Yorkshire Police with the first story predominantly going into primary schools. Again, I still feel that primary age children have been overlooked for education. I've been in schools where nine-year-old have been involved in a county lines. And it, you know these uh, teenagers are being exploited and groomed, and then they're now bringing in the primary age children. So it's really important that we do educate at least year six children before they go to secondary school, it's really important. And I know some will say, well, we don't, you know, our children don't need to be told about this. I think you're doing your children a disservice if you don't, because they're going to be exposed to it and they'll be exposed to it already, exposed to more than you know online. As parents, uh, carers, we all like to think that we can police everything that our children are doing, but sometimes you just can't. You can only do your best, but I think the best thing that we can do is educate them as much as we possibly can. Okay, so. Um, after going into a number of schools in North Yorkshire in primary schools and it being very uh, very successful working in partnership with North Yorkshire Police, um, Heidi Lewis, who's the head of the school's liaisons team, approached me and said, would you write a sequel to this story? Because we could see how many children were asking for a sequel. And then we knew, actually, this is having impact. They're taking notice. They're interested. I'm always a big believer in the power of storytelling for getting those messages across anyway um, for children of all abilities. And so I said, yes, so I set about uh, writing this equal trapped in county lines. So this story is aimed at age 12 upwards. So I'm now started to go into to secondary schools. So with this story, I'm a big believer in giving children a voice. And I always make sure that I involve them in the research. So I did research with North Yorkshire Youth Commission. We spent a day together um, brainstorming to see what they thought would be useful to use in the story. The York Police Cadets, Harrogate Police Cadets, um, the voices for the, this is in print and animation as with the other resource. And I worked with the Warren Youth Charity who provided voices for the characters as well, ranging from age 12 to 25. And again, children of all abilities taking part in the voiceovers as well. So I think it's really important. And also the artist, Alicia Abbott, is 20 years old. She's from Hull and now studying um, at the at London College of Arts, if I've got that right. Um, so it's very much a collaborative effort with uh, ch um, children and young people as well. And knowing what's, I wanted something that's going to be pitched at their age group because, you know, they're the ones that are going to be receiving it. So it's been very rewarding. Obviously, did a lot of research. I like to do lots of research when I'm writing my stories. Uh, gratefully thankful to Sonia Jones, uh, the substance uh, abuse manager uh, with We Are uh, with, with You, Shropshire. Uh, amazing lady. Um, and I got her to read through everything before anything was published. She was very, very helpful. I spoke to... Uh, North, lots of North Yorkshire police, um, detectives, uh, sergeants, to do lots of research, to speak to everybody who's involved in this and lived experience as well. So um, so as we started to go into schools, um, I was quite nervous about going into my first one because secondary school children, we've all been uh, that age group. Um, I have children myself and, uh, you know, we know better than anybody. <laughs> anyway, it is a hard age to be. So 
Um, but the testimony was brilliant because I was concerned. I thought if any age group are going to, you know, not like the story um, or uh, take the mickey out of my story, it's going to be that age group. But you know what? They've been really engaged with it, engaged with the characters uh, and, and what's behind it. Um, because in this story, I include uh, the, the characters all get together again because it's a sequel story and they're all groomed once again. And in this story, there is a fatality uh, through a stabbing and um, Luke, the character at the end goes missing and he's not found. And all the children are quite perturbed about this. They want to know what happens to Luke. So watch this space. There will be um, another sequel to this. And I think it's important for them to understand what has happened to Luke because children are going missing every day. It's, it's just so, so sad. And that's why it's really important to speak to our children and young people about it. Uh, I know I'm a very small fish in a very big pond, but I think early intervention is key. It's far better than trying to pick up the pieces after when, when, when a child's been groomed. Um, and it, 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 it is hard. And it's about some children don't feel like they have a choice. Um, you know, sometimes I'll say, oh, well, it was their choice. Well, sometimes they're put in a position where they don't have a choice and we have to understand that. And it's getting that message across that we're there for them. They can, they can speak to us. They need to know that they can go to someone. I know it's going to be really hard, but we have to try. We have to try that. So within the story, I include um, debt bondage as well. And I think that's really important. So I was in a school a few weeks ago. And if you look online at my YouTube channel, Christina Gavitash YouTube, there's a teacher on there, uh, Tom McNaught, who I interviewed, and he said he receives lots of information uh, through the PHSE Association, but nothing like what um, I produced. And he said that uh, the cuckooing element was explained. It, it was able, the children were able to understand what was meant by cuckooing through this, through watching the, the animated video. So again, I think it's really important. I'm a big believer in the power of storytelling uh, for getting that impactful message across and especially in the age ranges that we're looking at, but also, you know, children and adults alike. Um, so first and foremost, we're educating, helping the children, helping teachers, because they've got so much to do. The teachers have so much to do, they can't know everything. So it's helping the teachers as well. And also in the sessions, they take a copy, a printed copy home, um, and then they discuss that with the parents and carers. So it's getting it out into the community, which is really important. We all need to work together and uh, not against one another. We need to work together to help educate children in the best way that we possibly can, in, in, in any way we can. Because uh, these, these groups will, will stop at nothing. You know, I had a call from uh, an individual in Inverness who has their own children uh, one of their children has been groomed into county lines, 13 years old. And it seems there's quite a number of schools who have a, a county lines link up there. You wouldn't think Inverness would, but it does. But this, what the message is, I want you to know it's happening everywhere. It's not just in, not in just in deprived areas, neither. Not in areas of, it's, it's happening everywhere. So any child can be exploited. Um, you know, they, they'll get, perhaps hooked up on uh, cannabis, alcohol, all these things are all part of the grooming process. Um, I spoke to one individual who, you know, from an affluent family who started off on cannabis um, and then got onto cocaine and then ended up getting involved and, and dealing. So that was from an affluent family. So it can happen to any child anywhere. And this is the message that we need to, to, to get across and, and let children and young people know that we're actually uh, there for them. So what I would say to, to teachers uh, is that please don't dismiss this. Um, speak about it within your school, have a session within your school. The animated videos are all freely available. Obviously, I'm happy to, to visit schools. Uh, I know that struggle for funding, um, but I, I just can't work for free. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy to, to, to speak. I'm speaking at a conference uh, at Leeds University at the end of um, this month, um, all about early intervention and how, you know, as we can do as much preventative measures, take as much preventative measures as, as we possibly can. 
So um, I'm continuing to visit schools, both primary and secondary, and I'm open to that. The, the story trapped in county lines is on my YouTube channel, which is Christina Gavitas YouTube. It's also been showcased uh, as a finalist in the People's Book Prize, for which I'm grateful. I know it's not a story that will win because it's not a nice story, but it's a very necessary story. Um, and what you can do is look at some of the comments that people have put on there. Uh, it All it can do is help to raise awareness about the issue and that we need to get, get this out there and not brush it aside and oh, that's for another time. Just, just talk about it and get it out into the open. Um, and I'm going to be working with another school who, so for the first story, what I did is uh, I worked with year eights and we put together a poem, which is, this is in primary schools, that's recited at the end of every session because it helps with that measurable impact. So the, the, um, the poem is a synopsis of the story. So it helps, it helps them to, to remember. And I'm a big believer in that core reading anyway. So I am going to be working with them um, year eight and nine to produce another poem which will be a synopsis of this story as well so it's all it's all very relevant and it's all very much needed so within schools you you know you, you're touching on the literacy the writing element as well and I do um do a lot of a lot of research because I think that's really important to get it right uh, and to make sure that it's effective um when I'm working within your school so uh, it was Book of the Week at the NSPCC. Um, I went down uh, for a visit there. And um, I've been chatting with, with, with Childline as well about online content um, and, and just getting that, that, that message out. Because I'm, I'm speaking and engaging with children and young people in all of my sessions, all relating to this, it's really important that, that they understand the terminology. Because uh, one thing I've noticed is, County lines, it's all encompassing. You've got the debt bondage, the cuckooing, and that some don't understand what county lines are, neither even in secondary schools. We just assume, and we shouldn't just assume. So it's getting to know what's behind that, what's involved, and what is behind it. Um, and another school I went into, the, the teacher thanked me for explaining what cuckooing meant because whilst they understand in black and white on paper, yes, that's what it means. In reality, what does that mean? You know, how how can they uh, envisage that? And again, this is put across in a way on the animation so as they can understand what that means. Um, so that's that's really important. So we shouldn't just assume that because they're older, they understand because they, they don't a lot of the time. They can, you know, tick boxes and do questionnaires, but they're not reality, are they? I think it's speaking to people. So what I mean, um, what I'm wanting to do is interview more uh, children, young people and teachers when I go into schools and it's what I've started doing. So if you want to see any of the comments, uh, York High and Rosset High and Barbie High, they've all got some comments on there from teachers or from pupils about what they've seen and what they've understood by it, which I think is really important. Well, you know, thank you for listening to me today. I know this is a, a short snippet, but if you do want to talk further, I'm, I'm, I'm open um, to visits also just just to having a chat really but please don't assume that your, your your children understand everything and as I say this is children from all walks of life so from all families so thank you very much <laughs>